okay, sorry. Real quick, real quick. Um, there was uh, these couple of trailers I saw back when I saw the um, these uh, sorry to disturb you, or sorry to bother you movie. Hope the fans not too loud. But anyway, the thing is, is that they got the. Uh, I've been seeing a couple of the. You know, uh, how best describe this? The um, ethnicities trailers. And there's some bit of like. What's the what's the kind word for this? Uh, illogicalness of the story as it's being told. Now the first trailer I came across was called Star or Star Rising something. I don't know. The lead character was named Star, and her uh, thing is that uh, is that she's stuck between two worlds between the upper class white folk and the lower class black something I, I'm not entirely sure but she like goes to the preppy school by day but then by weekend she goes clubbing and or something like that so she's like between two worlds apparently she's the only real person that can actually do that because <gasps> everyone else saying I can't go outside my comfort zone or whatever you know, so, so that's her thing, and then the story too. So we got our setup for the character. Now, what the character's going to go through? What is the plot? The plot is is that her love interest, if not her boyfriend at the time, is giving her a ride home. They get pulled over by a cop. Yeah, you can already tell exactly where this is going. You know, it's like, well, duh, and yes, duh. What happens? He gets out of the car. The cops checking his license or whatever have you and the guy's all like he 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 hey let's have some fun reaches into the car grabs a comb or his hair right regular comb she's saying wait no no don't 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 do that don't do that don't don't try to be funny here in this situation don't do that he's like ah I get this and a couple of cuts later and it's like he's on the ground dead and she's there crying next to him it's like yeah, okay, apparently he was the only person in the universe who couldn't see that coming. So somewhere in his brain, he thought, well, it's not like we're all going to have a laugh. It's not like he's going to shoot me dead or anything. Really? That just didn't occur to you at all. And so then there's this big tension between the classes and the races. And uh, she becomes a voice for the people lost me after that point because not that I was very interested in this trailer to begin with but it just sounds incredibly cliche as it sounds you know all about voices of the people but I like voices of people with people who are actually intelligent it just comes off as, as kind of stupid cliche in order to set it up for her to rise to the occasion to be a voice of the people and it's like so a character has to be beyond incredibly stupid in order to set that up for this grandeur of the lead character. That's just lazy writing right there. It's just more lazy writing. Now again, the next trailer I got was the only good okay, the only good trailer I got in the before before the movie, uh, before I saw Sorry to Bother You was the Creed uh, 2 trailer. That was only actually a decent one. And, um... Anyway, so... The, the next trailer after that, it was this... It starts off as this kind of comedy between these three friends talking about... They're sitting in the car, and it's like... You want a gun? I got this gun. You mean this gun? You know? And they start putting to talk, and they're probably high on weed or whatever, and the guy calls an Uber. He says, is this an Uber? He goes, yeah. This is an Uber. You know, that's why it's all tricked out in here. It's all nice and fancy. So there are, I guess, three friends, but I guess two are pivotal. So the rest of the trailer only talks about the two. Uh, one is a guy who just got out. He's trying to make his um, 
positive review or whatever to say he can be re he can finally be turned completely loose on society. He's okay. He's not a threat to himself or others. He can keep his his nose clean for extended periods of time. But his friend is the trigger happy, self destructive guy, you know, who's waving his gun around at parties. And he says, "Why are you hanging out with this guy? He's going to." He's ruining your your parole or whatever if, if, if you get caught up in his bullshit. He's like, but I gotta be there for him. He's my friend. Your friend? You're, you're basing this off of loyalty? Look, if you can't get him with a decent first conversation, you're, you're not gonna reach him at all. And it's best to just stay the fuck away. But anyway, that is set up. Which then leads into the, uh, the guy is a, I guess a mover, I guess. Anyway, he's in his truck. He's doing his last run. He's heading back to put the truck away, I guess. When some guy he almost hits, he's kind of like saying, "Help me, help me!" Runs past his truck, and the police officer says, uh, "Halt or I'll shoot!" And the guy's flailing his hands around. You see, there's nothing in his hands, and the cop just opens up and shoots him. Shoots him dead right there, right in the back. And the guy is staring at him through the window like, the fuck did you do? Why'd you do that? And the cop just like kind of turns to look at him like, oh no, I got me as a witness. So this movie has a bit of identity crisis because I don't know what it's about. It's like it starts off as a comedy, goes more into a drama, and then turns into one of those introspective, I didn't want to be the monster. But every time you come around, I, you know, it, it, it makes, it, the, the, convert, the, the situation forces me to be the monster. And it's like, it's either you're gonna, you're, you're, you know what you're doing, movie. But as the record of Hollywood states, I really doubt that. So this movie's having a lot of identity crisis. I think, I think, the movie sets up as the comedy in the beginning is a showcase, while they're high, the characters are high, it's supposed to showcase the them trying to escape the reality and be happy and fun and carefree and just try to enjoy life but they're really ignoring it and trying to you know live in their own little bubble of fantasy for the brief moment the middle is their reality this they cannot escape from and then near the end i believe is supposed to be what do you do when you're faced with that reality i believe but then again I could be wrong in reading too much into this. And the movie could be just pure crap. You know, it could try and fail miserably in trying to convey that or its original message. So, um, having that being said about these films, uh, the other three films, I don't know if I mentioned this before in other reviews or rants, but there was a a general common theme running around. Okay, we all know that last year in 2017 was the year of Me Too, when all that went down, right? Okay, now, 2018, there are three films coming out. That have all of the Me Too stuff in there. Which feels out of place because it's been a year. It's it's over. That's kind of winding down. We're moving on to the next big wave of drama and bullshit and all that other stuff. So now in The Incredibles 2. Decent movie by the way. Has suddenly has this era of Me Too chauvinistic pig stuff in it in their marriage and yeah in the lead's marriage suddenly there's this there's this stuff in there and it's like okay uh, all right all right whatever then the trailer for the legos 2 movie you know we get that same feeling again where it's like well Emmett got credit for saving the day even though you did all the work it's like well he did pull a self-sacrifice move that helped us to save the day, so he did contribute, you know, and then, in, um, oh, 
damn it, I forgot. What was it again? Incredibles, Lego. Damn, I forgot what the third one was. Oh, right, right. Wreck It Ralph 2. There's this other stuff where it's like, like, what is it with guys and trying to save girls? And it's like, really? We're going to have this talk again? I don't understand why it's in there now. And it's like the timing's all off. And you can't just talk about it and say it's old fashioned, it's out of date. Yeah, we used to live in caves. We don't anymore because we moved on, we've learned, we've grown, we evolved. And everyone keeps saying that we need to keep talking about this. It's like we talked about it a lot. It was there, it had its time and place, and now we need to move on. We can't dwell on this. Trust me, I know about dwelling. But the thing is, it all feels too late and it all feels forced because it's all just, it's just shoved in there. You know, it has no real context because it was never there before and now it just is. And... So I just wanted to bring that up. I just hope they don't just cram this all in because I hate the squirm factor because they make you feel so uncomfortable with all this. Oh, and, and apparently in the Disney series reboot of DuckTales, when, uh, uh, what was it, in the latest episodes where Fenton Crackshell has been, identity has been revealed and apparently... Brown feathers is supposed to indicate that he's Hispanic. Apparently. Okay, let's go with that. That the antagonist, um, the guy that warns Waddle, Waddle starts, once he realizes this, starts calling him Chico and something else. And, the, and he said, oh, Hispanic people, some Hispanic people were were rather uncomfortable about that. Well, really? That, that's what makes you uncomfortable? It's like, he's the antagonist! They're not nice people. You know, it's like... You, you, what, what were you expecting, exactly? To him to be nice? If he was nice, he wouldn't be the antagonist. He'd just be a nice character like everyone else. And it's like, whoa... It's like, it's like somebody's, like, shocked that Han shot that guy in Die Hard in the, in the head. You know, Naka, the, the Nakamura guy. The Kagi? The Kagi. Kagi. And we shot him in the head. It's like, why are you surprised? He's the bad guy. You know, it's like that. It's like, well, yeah, they have to show his, you know, not respecting anyone. He doesn't respect anyone. You know, people shouldn't act so surprised around antagonists. They're antagonists for a reason. You know, are not supposed to like them. You're supposed to hate what they represent. Not the bigotry, it's the self-centered mindedness, you know. He doesn't, he doesn't respect anybody outside the house. He doesn't, outside the house, outside of himself, he doesn't respect Huey, Dewey, and Louie, or probably even Scrooge for that matter. You know? it, it's just, it's just weird having someone that surprised about an antagonist being an antagonist. Of course, Draken jacking some poor kid's souped-up wheelchair was a, a bit much. But, like he says, goes, Newsflash, Chico, I'm a bad man. It's like, yeah, we need to remind you, after kind of silly Draken, we're getting back into, you know, evil standard Draken, because in the, the original first season, Draken was an actual villain. Then throughout most of the series, he was this goofy character, and then it's like this one episode, he finally comes back to being an actual villain again. Which is an actual threat, an actual self-centered character. Anyway, yes. So... I just wanted to explain that to the world, because apparently he needs explaining about antagonists. 
Trust me, I know. Ugh, God. Anyway, yes, I gotta go. This thing's running out of power. So just... Yeah. So I hope I helped somebody out there or clarified something for somebody or at least did something for somebody. So, anyway, take care and as always... Hit the movies, and yes, yeah, someday I will have an actual review with actual cutscenes in it, and not these rants. Soon, soon. I hope.